This car is going to be sold very, very soon. It is going to be for sale and I'm moving on. Where are we going right now? Here we go. We've made it. What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. If you saw the first episode of this very casual YouTube series, then you would have seen my journey around the M25 in the Audi A1, the Nuke, as I explained sadly, but also excitingly, that I am going to be looking for a replacement of the Audi A1. And behind me, you can see this big badge here, the Porsche badge. I'm down at Porsche Colchester, and they have kindly invited me down to drive their brand new 911 Carrera S. Now I don't have too much experience behind the wheel of Porsches, but I have been in the passenger seat on a fair few Tom Cayman Army Tricks. I'm not sure whether you remember that one, but it was matte grey, crazy loud. And I also actually tested the Porsche Boxster when I did my first supercar. And funny enough, when I did my first supercar with Premier Velocity, they kept pestering me, go in the Porsche, go in the Porsche, you'll have the most fun in it. And I just wanted to do the Lamborghinis, the C63, the Nissan GTRs. And when I went in the Porsche Boxster, I was blown away by the performance. And it seems that everyone that experiences Porsche before weren't big fans. But as soon as they've experienced it, whether that be from the driver's side or the passenger side, they fall in love and realize why they are so popular. Porsche have given me the keys to a 2016 911 Carrera S in Guards Red. This car has actually appeared on my YouTube channel when Sid drove the car with me in the passenger seat and I was very, very scared. Today, I'm gonna to take it a little bit easy. I'm gonna be exploring the car and this video, hopefully, I can start creating a checklist of things that I want to replace the Audi A1. And what better place to start than Porsche? The 911 is arguably the best daily sports car in the world. So I thought, let's test this out, create a checklist, and then work from there. I feel like I'm living a bit of a dream at the moment. I have just been given the keys to this brand new 2016 Guards Red Porsche Carrera 911S, brand new. I am learning this on camera for the first time. Richard kindly offered to do a sort of handover style um, to show me the, the how things work. And I said, show me how to put it in drive and I'll learn the rest. I'm gonna have to start moving this, this seat around a little bit. How do you do this? Like that. Okay, so, first impressions, incredibly comfy. Turn the key. Let's get the aircon on the go because it is, with the sun out, very, very warm. Ah! Foot off the brake and we're moving. How exciting, and I didn't check my mirrors. Oh, it looks good in the uh, reflection of the Ferrari dealership there. Okay, immediate impressions are, firstly, the seats are very, very comfortable. The amount of visibility and light entering this car is like I've never experienced. We've got a sunroof here, we've got windows all around, which just makes everything under natural light incredibly light. This video is to try and work out what I want as a replacement to the Nuke. Like I mentioned, I have been posting on Twitter all sorts of cars from all ends of the spectrum. RS3, TTRS, BMW M4, Maserati, Gran Turismo. I haven't posted many Porsches. However, I did post a Porsche Cayman and a lot of people suggested that. One thing that I will immediately say from driving this car is this specific car, the 911 Carrera S brand new, is way out of my budget. The idea of this video is to take the best sports car daily ever to exist, which is this car in my eyes, the 911, and work out things that I can take from this car, things that this car is missing in terms of what I need in my life. And that is how I'm going to come up with a list of things that I want to be able to tick off when I select replacing the Audi A1. Nice 
red F-Type. Oh, red crew. Ooh. V6, lovely. It's so easy to drive. The gearbox, I cannot feel a gear shift. I have not felt a gear shift yet, and I'm in sixth gear. But the ease of use to drive and the direct steering of just nimbling around roundabouts and onto a motorway, I know that that is not putting the car to any sort of test whatsoever. But it's so easy, seventh gear. I haven't felt a gear shift. I feel the gear shift slightly in the AMG GTS. Ever so slightly, I can feel the gearbox working. In this car, you can't. So now we're cruising, and I can imagine off camera, I'll be cruising with the music on. Tons of visibility, super smooth suspension, plenty of power on my right foot whenever I need it. Whenever I'm looking to do that overtake, all of the power that I will ever need is right there. And because the engine sits over the rear wheels, I've got so much weight over the rear wheels that in the dry, in the heat, I'm not going to lose traction, even though this is a rear wheel drive car. So I'm already thinking in my head, yes, this is the perfect daily, but am I basing my daily on this specific setup? I've just put the car in Sport Plus, and I'm gonna put it in manual. Oh, a lot of people interested in the red Porsche. So, let's see how quick this is. <laughs> Plenty of power. The thing with Porsche, is that it is power delivery that I have realized over my brief experiences with the 911 Turbo S and this car, is that how worryingly easy it is to climb up the miles per hour. That's the scary thing, and how easy it does it as well. I'm gonna put it back into um, drive. I've just pressed the button that I probably shouldn't have pressed. This button, if I had one negative thing to say about this car, this button needs to be in red with a do not press sign because going back to some of my pre-existing uh, views on Porsche thinking that they were quite boring, quite dulled down um, and more in the sports car sector than supercar, um, obviously kind of is the case, still have those same sorts of opinion but they're a lot more pleasant than I was expecting. However, this button, I was told about this button, I've just pressed it, and it's an experience. So I wanted to put it on camera that this button is called Sports Response and is in the same sort of league as NOS. This button here gives you a 20 second boost of all of the performance and turbo power that you can have on a car, it gives you 20 seconds of it for you to hoon. Ready? I'm gonna press this button now and you'll hear the car. Oh, and the gearbox is proper kicking you there. I felt that gear shift. And, I'll be honest, I can hear the engine. I've got four seconds left. Three, two, one. Press it again. I don't know how many times you can press it at once. But this car, in my eyes, is the pinnacle of daily sports car. You can use it every single day. You can probably shove your kids in the back or your bags, which I've done because I don't have kids. Um, and then you can just cruise around. It is so relaxing and chilled to cruise around it. And then as a driving experience, it's so clinical, the German engineering and the way that this car is put together and the way that it delivers the power, but also the seamlessness of each gear change is incredible. It is an absolute joy to drive, whether you're in the town, whether you're on the motorway. I'm not gonna say, well, I am gonna say it. The Nuke, in my eyes, for the price point is possibly the best car that you can buy because it is stable on the motorway. It's a good cruiser. My car didn't have cruise control. This is just a beefed up version and obviously a fundamentally much, much more expensive version. 
um, than the A1, but I feel like I can throw this car around just like I did with the Audi A1 because it's so capable. Now let's move on to what am I looking for taking out of this car, what am I gonna be looking for as a nuke replacement? Number one, the most important thing is that it needs to be a good cruiser. It needs to be a good GT car. It also, number two, it needs to look good as well. It needs to stand out because the A1, even though it was all blacked out, uh, which is normally the stealth approach, it did stand out. It looked amazing. And every time I parked up, I always turn around to look at it, which is an important factor. When owning a car, you know you've made the right decision if every time you park it, you turn around and look at it. And sometimes, take a photo. I think the interior is obviously a very important element to the car uh, because you're spending so much time in the car, the modern technologies and the whole interface. I have mentioned in this video before that I do want a different brand from Audi and Mercedes purely so that I can explore it and so that we can go on a journey together learning about the car, learning what different buttons do, learning different, well here it's touchscreen and, and I've got all of this virtual cockpit stuff up here. That's really cool to explore. So I think I'm gonna try and step away from Audi and Mercedes. I will obviously test them and if I fall in love again with the RS3 or I get the opportunity of driving a TTS or a TT RS and fall in love with that, then obviously my heart will always do the talking. If I fall in love with a car, then that is the car for me. But I am gonna be looking at other manufacturers as well, Porsche, BMW, along with a few others. Back down with a sun visor. It needs to have a sun visor. My new daily needs to have a sun visor. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and hopefully you can join me on the journey and get excited with me. Leave a comment in the comment box on what you want to see on this very casual series of trying to find the ultimate daily sports car, daily hot hatch, whatever it is that I end up buying to replace the Nuke, it has to live up to the Nuke's expectations. It was a phenomenal car, I'm going to be sad to see it go, but at the same time I am crazily excited about what is just around the corner. So thank you for watching guys, thank you for supporting as always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you very soon. I'm going to press this NOS button one more time, ready?